Hello, all you wonderful fools. It's time for the Mr. T Show. Here we go, let's start the show. No sit by Mr. T. Nintendo video games, all the favorite ones for me. Music review, some gameplay too. Battle and drones is what I do. Is it? Is it I am just the show by Mr. T. It's the show by Mr. T. Hey there, fools. Big T back again with another video. This video will be talking about um, Panic Button and, you know, the things they're doing on the Switch, uh, which are pretty, pretty awesome. Um, but I also want to compare them to uh, a team that worked on, well, not a team, but a company that worked on uh, Nintendo consoles before. And that is, of course, Factor 5. Now, we all know that Panic Button has been doing some pretty impressive things. Uh, with the Switch hardware, they ported uh, Doom, Wolfenstein, um, Rocket League, and now they're bringing over Warframe, uh, which is uh, pretty good, pretty cool stuff. I mean, and I, I compared them to uh, Factor Five. Um, I'm comp I'm comparing them. I'm not com I'm comparing them to Factor Five because of uh, I think their wizardry with Nintendo hardware. And that's pretty much as far as it goes. I'm not saying that they put out games that are you know, similar or on par or as impactful or whatever. Um, I think some of these games are actually more impactful than some of the stuff that Factor 5 was doing. But um, I'm just saying that they're, they remind me of Factor 5 and what they did for the N64, but also the GameCube. You remember Factor 5 worked on um, Star Wars games mostly. Uh, for Nintendo, um, the first one being Rogue Squadron, uh, the original, and then also I believe Battle for Naboo, um, which was also on N64, and then they moved over to the technically visually impressive Rogue Squadron 2 for the GameCube, and that game was mind-boggling. Um, it came out a few years after the re-release of the Star Wars movies, uh, the original trilogy um, that came in the mid uh, to late 90s uh, in the theaters. Um, and there was new scenes and stuff added. And I remember seeing some kind of comparison video as far as the uh, the the new uh, approaching, approaching uh, X-Wing squadron um, at the end of uh, A New Hope. And comparing that with that same scene from uh, uh, in Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube, and how much, how close and impressive they looked. Um, obviously, it wasn't on par with the the visuals in the movie, but it just looked and felt like it. And it was at 60 frames, and that was another thing. They, they I mean, they it seemed like they pushed the hardware early on, especially with the GameCube. Obviously, the 64 stuff came a little later in its life. But they really were impressive technically when it came to not only visuals uh, and frame rate, but also audio. The uh, the audio uh, in those Rogue Squadron games was amazing. Uh, Rogue Squadron 2 and 3, and also, obviously, Rogue Squadron on N64, especially for it being the, those games being cart-based and you having to compress that audio. The audio in all those games were pretty amazing. Um, and still to stand the test of time. And also the games, maybe not the N64 games, Battle for Naboo and um, uh, Rogue Squadron, but definitely um, Rogue Squadron 2 and 3, uh, because they're both 60 frame per second games for one, so that helps. But they just look still look really good, and they're, I still play them. They're still fun to play. Um, and so that's, I mean, I just, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into everything. Uh, I just think it was really interesting, uh, you know, they just remind me a lot of uh, of uh, Factor 5, and hopefully they don't go the same route, you know, um, they seem to be doing really well, they seem to have uh, a, a pretty good grasp of uh, the Switch's hardware, and it seems like they're in high demand, there's companies say, looking for them to port this, port that, and I think they've made some good decisions on the game they ported. Uh, Doom is a pretty impactful game, I think. Wolfenstein as well uh, for the Switch, because there's not many games, you know, first-person shooters with, um, you know, current-gen visuals and stuff on them. 
and obviously there's some uh, some drawbacks um, on the switch as far as the visuals go and frame rate but just to have that kind of a you know a visual style game on the switch we don't have much of and now they also have uh, warframe uh, which is again another one of those quote-unquote realistic uh, this is a third-person action shooter um, so and it looked pretty zippy pretty fast I don't know if it's gonna be 60 frames or not but from the uh, launch trailer it did look pretty good so yeah I just wanted to throw that comparison out there again it's not like a one-to-one -one straight up comparison um, but uh, I just think uh, as far as their technical wizardry goes as far as Nintendo hardware this just kind of reminded me of Factor 5 and um, you know hopefully um, they'll be, get to do uh, some of their own stuff and not just do you know bring over ports and stuff but I'm sure they're making a nice penny porting these these games over for these other uh, developers and publishers so I uh, hope they keep at it yeah um, it's really cool to have the kind of support uh, the types of games that they bring over so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, what do you think about my comparison here are you excited for uh, panic button and whatever they may bring in the future let me know in the comments below thank you as always for watching and listening and now see you folks next time peace out <laughs>